Let's learn about Europe. Europe is Earth's second smallest continent by size, but third largest by how many people live there. Most of Europe has a temperate climate, which means it doesn't usually get really hot or really cold. Europe is warmer than other places so far north because of the North Atlantic Current. Water in the Gulf of Mexico, which is closer to the equator so gets warmed up by more direct sunlight, is carried by the North Atlantic Current across the ocean and north to Europe, where it slowly releases the warmth into the air. Europe is surrounded by water on three sides, the Atlantic Ocean to the west, the Arctic Ocean to the north, and the Mediterranean Sea that separates Europe from Africa to the south. A landform surrounded by water on three sides is called a peninsula, and Europe is called a peninsula of peninsulas because it has a lot of smaller peninsulas connected to it. The biggest is the Fennoscandian Peninsula in the north, which is between the Arctic Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Baltic Sea. Europe also has the Iberian Peninsula, which is between the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea, the Italian Peninsula, which sticks out in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, and the Balkan Peninsula, between the Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea. The Black Sea is really interesting. Fresh water flows into the Black Sea from six big rivers, and salty water flows in from an undersea river from the Mediterranean Sea. That makes a layer of less salty water on the top, with very salty water underneath. These two layers of water don't mix, which means oxygen from the air doesn't get down to the deep water. When this happens, it's called a meromictic basin. The Black Sea is the world's largest meromictic basin. Because fish and most other sea creatures need the oxygen dissolved in water to breathe, the only living things found in the deep water of the Black Sea are kinds of bacteria that don't breathe oxygen. That lack of oxygen also means boats that sink to the bottom of the Black Sea can last for hundreds or thousands of years. At the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea, there's a place called the Lotolant Basin. Like the bottom of the Black Sea, the water in the Lotolant Basin is so salty it doesn't mix with the water above it, and doesn't have enough oxygen dissolved in the water for fish to live there. But in 2010, scientists found three species of Lorisiferans living there. Lorisiferans are teeny tiny animals that live in the deep oceans. Like some kinds of protozoans and fungi, these Lorisiferans have hydrogenosomes which let them survive without oxygen. Instead of breathing out carbon dioxide like other animals, they breathe out hydrogen. They're the only animals we know of that can survive without oxygen. The biggest land animal in Europe is the European bison, also known as the visent or zuber. Today, European bison only live in a few places in Eastern Europe, but they used to live across most of Europe. People have lived in Europe for at least 40,000 years. Thousands of years ago, European architects built monuments using huge rocks called megaliths. The most famous is Stonehenge, which was built beginning about 5,000 years ago in England. There are even older stone circles in the British Isles, including some near Scarab Ray, the best-preserved Stone Age village in Europe. The houses in Scarabray have walls, shelves, boxes, chairs, and beds made of rocks. It was first built over 5,000 years ago. There are even older megalithic buildings on the island of Malta in the Mediterranean Sea, including one huge temple built underground called the Hypogeum of Hall Sofliani. It was first built around 6,000 years ago. We don't know exactly what it was used for, but the size of it, how hard it would have been to build, and the artifacts found there tell us that to the people who built it, it was a very special place. 
5,000 years ago, an advanced civilization developed on the island of Crete in the eastern Mediterranean. We call them the Minoans. The Minoans built huge palaces, made incredible works of art, sailed across the sea to trade with ancient Egypt and Western Asia, and developed their own writing system called Linear A, which we haven't figured out how to read yet. A lot of dinosaur fossils have been found in Europe. One of the most interesting fossils is a small dinosaur called Archaeopteryx. People first discovered Archaeopteryx about 150 years ago. It had teeth, claws, and a tail like other dinosaurs, but it also had feathers and wings like birds. Scientists had trouble deciding if it was a bird or a dinosaur because it's in between or both. What Archaeopteryx and other feathered dinosaurs and bird skeletons tell us is that birds are one branch of the dinosaur family. That pigeon you see out your window is a distant cousin of T-Rex. <laughs>